Hi, my name's Sam. Uh, welcome to my second video on perfumery raw materials. Uh, so last time I covered citrus and today I'm going to be covering the conifer woods. So why have I chosen conifer woods as a second group of materials? Um, and especially considering that they're not used that much in fine fragrance, I would say. They are used, but not as much maybe as florals or something else. So I've got two reasons for this. Firstly, all the conifer woods are quite related, so they're really similar to each other um, in terms of kind of how they're related as plant species. And also the compositions aren't that different, which is good because it helps us kind of wrap our heads around them. And secondly, um, they are not too expensive um, and that's because they're very abundant in nature. Um, but equally, the demand necessarily isn't always as high, which means that we can get a load of these conifer oils quite cheaply to study or we can use them quite cheaply when making our perfume. Um, so if we know how to use them well, we can still get a nice kind of smell out of them overall without having to spend loads and loads on some really expensive kind of flower extract or something. Um, and the other thing is that people are quite, um, I would say familiar with conifer oil scents because they're so abundant that things like pine trees, you come across quite often. So they're very, I would say, warm and comforting. Um, so I'm gonna firstly look at how all these plants are related. And then secondly, we're gonna dive into what some of these oils smell like. Firstly then, what are conifers? Well, in biology, we have a class of plants and that is just kind of a tier of organization that you can have. So all plant species and animals are organized in terms of a hierarchy. And a class is quite a broad position, quite high up in the hierarchy. So um, what is common about all these conifers? Well, they're all woody plants, uh, mostly trees and they're also all perennials, which means they live for more than two years. Next, we're gonna go down one level in this kind of hierarchy, um, and then we get to what's called an order, um, and all the conifers that are alive today exist within the same order, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, and then we go one level further down, and then we reach families. So there are quite a few different families, um, but, we're going to consider cypress and pine and that's because this is where you find most of the essential oils that are used in perfumery. So um, firstly pine, um, well this is the most diverse family out of all the conifers and it contains cedars, firs, hemlocks, pines and spruces and these um, all yield an essential oil which can be used in perfumery um, and they are found all over the world. Um, and then the second family that we're going to look at is cypress um, and this includes the Mediterranean cypress which is that very tall pointy tree that you might have seen in films or something or in Italy um, but it also includes juniper um, and the oils for both of these can be used in perfumery. Now I love cypress oil, I think it smells really nice however um, I'm not going to cover it in this video. As for juniper, um, essential oils can be distilled from the wood or the berries or the leaves. Um, however, if the wood of a certain type of juniper is destructively distilled, um, a tar is given, um, which is very thick black substance. And then if that is rectified, i.e. just distilled again, um, something called rectified cade oil is given um, and that's something we'll touch on in the video. The first oil that I looked at was black spruce. Um, there are lots of different types of spruce oil um, but black spruce is mostly found in Canada and it's meant to smell um, very fresh and sweet um, and balsamic. Um, I found that it smell, it did smell quite fresh and woody, um, a bit like a pine tree However, there was some kind of off note, some kind of dryness um, to it. And I don't know if this was just the quality of the oil. Um, the one I had was from Mystic Moments, so maybe something from a different manufacturer would have been better. Um, but I do get the impression that, um, especially with these conifer oils, the quality can vary quite a lot. Um, so it lasted, um, I would say, about the time of a top to mid note. Um, so about three hours on the 10th strip and 
I have read that it can be used in pine accords or forest accords and also is quite commonly used in household products. Um, and then as for the constituents, we have limonene, alpha pinene and camphene, all of which are really quite common terpenes, so nothing too surprising there. Now the second oil that I looked at was cade oil. So the way, as I said before, this is produced is there's a distillation of the wood and then the tar that's produced from that is then re-distilled um, and that is what's called rectification. So the reason we would use rectified cade oil in perfumery is because this gets rid of kind of most of the carcinogens that are found in the unrectified cade oil. So that is banned for use. Um, and then there is also an IFRA limit on how much of the rectified oil you can use just because there's some concern that there could be some trace amounts of carcinogens left over from that rectification process. Um, so this oil is used in perfumery, however um, it does seem that it's used at fairly low concentrations. Um, and from what I found, even at 0.1%, it smelled pretty strongly on the scent strip, so I can't imagine you would need to use much. Um, so I would have thought that it could be fairly safe to use at low amounts, but you definitely wouldn't want to be using lots of it. Um, so how does it smell? Well, at a high concentration, it is intensely smoky, actually just way too smoky, so much that it's sickly. But as you go down in concentration, it does become a bit more palatable, a bit more leathery and a bit softer. Um, also when you leave it over time on the scent strip it also becomes a bit more mellow and a bit softer. Um, and it lasted quite a while as well. Um, it did last um, over a day. Um, so I would say it's somewhere between a mid and a bass note. Um, and I would say you could use it for leather accords or smoke accords or anything in that kind of olfactory territory. And as for the constituents, well, there aren't any major ones, and the reason is because it's just a mess of minor constituents, uh, most of which are phenols. Um, and I think the way this happens is just when this tar is produced, um, it's under so much heat, and basically what happens is everything's reacting with everything, and it just leaves this kind of mess of... Um, of products it's just a bit like burning toast really all of the black stuff that you get it's just it's just a mess of lots of different things um, and then yeah and then it smells burn next we have cedar wood um, yeah so cedar wood much more simple than the cade it's just cedar wood which has been steam distilled and it smells really really nice uh, it smells like fresh pencil shavings or well at least the Virginian cedar wood does um, which is the one I chose for this evaluation because it was the favourite out of the ones I tested. Um, and yeah, that lasted quite a while. It lasted about a day. Um, I would say it was a mid note. Um, and it was quite cheap as well. £41 per kilogram um, from Mystic Moments, of which the quality seemed fairly good. Um, it did have a slight kind of dryness to it, um, I don't know how to describe it. it, maybe it could have been a bit higher quality from somewhere else, however I think for the cost I was quite happy with what I got. Um, and then what's it made of? Well you've got all of these compounds which kind of have seed in the name, so seedrine and seedroll. Um, I'm pretty sure these compounds are named after the fact that they were found in cedar wood, so these are pretty much what give it its characteristic smell. Um, also, we've got thujopsine, um, but yeah, so these compounds look visually quite different to something, to kind of regular terpenes we find in other woods, um, and that is reflective of the quite unique smell. So cedar wood doesn't smell like pine, it does smell like cedar or like pencil shavings. Um, yeah, and this wood smells super nice, super homely. Just kind of imagine you're making some stuff out of some wood, you know, sawing some bits of wood. I don't know. Next, we come to juniper. Now, you can extract juniper in quite a lot of ways. So you could use the wood or the berries or the leaves. Um, I'm looking at juniper berry oil here. And this one in particular is from the Himalayas. 
Um, and this oil was really, really nice. It's still quite cheap, 89 pounds a kilogram. Um, and it's very sweet, balsamic, um, almost a little bit spicy. Kind of reminded me almost of frankincense, but overall it was very sweet and woody. This is definitely the best oil that I've tried so far from Mystic Moments. Um, I haven't tried any other suppliers, however, maybe that's something that I should do at some point in the future. Um, and then looking at the constituents, we've got both alpha and beta pinene as the two major constituents in quite an equal ratio. Um, and it's quite interesting because you can actually see where the alpha and the beta come from. So looking at the molecule, the only difference is the position of that double bond. And finally, I'm just going to mention a few more oils which I tried at 10%, however I didn't do a full study on. So firstly there's Fur Needle Siberian, now this oil smelled extremely similar to the black spruce so I didn't think it was worth looking at in any more detail. Um, then we've got Juniper Leaf, um, now this unlike the Juniper Berry was a lot more medicinal and harsher, um, sharp smelling, I can't see that being as easy to use in a perfume. Then also I looked at three different types of cedarwood oil. So I also looked at the Himalayan, the Chinese and the Atlas types. Uh, and what I found was the Chinese one smells fairly similar to the Virginian. However, I would say a touch more smoky and slightly less fresh. I'm not sure how much of this is due to the origin and how much is just due to the difference in manufacturing process. Um, and then the Himalayan and the Atlas cedarwood oils both smelt fairly different from those other two, however they smelt quite similar to each other. And those smelled a lot sweeter, um, less woody, um, and it was kind of hard to describe exactly how they smelled, but I didn't like them as much as the other two cedarwood scents. Maybe that's just because they didn't give the same kind of uh, woody impression that I was expecting. Okay, now that is it. So thanks for watching and yeah, uh, have a great day. Please like the video if you liked it or comment or something like that. And I am hoping to cover the non-conifer woods or some other kind of woods next time. So we'll see what happens. Goodbye.